Hello, and thanks for watching this Acumatica video on Generic Inquiries, Advanced Functionality. So in Acumatica, Generic Inquiries provide powerful functionality for getting to the data that you want and displaying it in any format that you need. And on top of that, being able to put the Generic Inquiries throughout the sitemap so that your end users can get to it, being able to use those Generic Inquiries for charts and dashboard counters, being able to expose those generic inquiries to external data sources, turning them into reports for creating pivot tables and things like that. It's one of Acumatica's most powerful features in the platform. So let's take a look at the generic inquiry screen. The first thing we'll do is we'll look at something simple like payables, bills, and adjustments. So this is a pretty simple generic inquiry. It comes out of the box with Acumatica. You can see there's a number of columns here and we don't have any filters configured and user filters but let's go to customization and edit this generic inquiry so in past videos we've talked about building one with the different tables and the joins relations and how you can add parameters and we've talked about adding columns using the results grid here you could add any column that you want here but today we're going to take a look at some of the additional tools that you can use in generic inquiries so if we go to the entry point you'll notice a few options here. The first one is enable mass actions on records. So what this does when we check it, it opens up a new tab here called mass actions. And it allows us to add any fields that are inside this result grid that we maybe can make changes to. So let's say for example, we wanna add an action, uh, maybe to approve a few bills at a time. So we'll click on Approve, we'll save it. You can add any number of actions here. Keep in mind, not all actions are supported. Some of them just don't make sense. For example, you can't necessarily recalculate prices on a bill that's already been released. So there's some restrictions here, but if we go back to our inquiry screen, you'll now notice we have these different checkboxes across the left-hand side. This allows us to select a couple of records and go to actions and you'll notice the actions that we've added to that mass action screen. We can now see here, there's only one. We'll click approve here. These two bills require approval. And if we open them up, you can now see they've gone from pending approval to the balance state. Now they can be released. So you have a lot of options here with the mass action screen. If we go back, we take a look at the generic inquiry. And we go back to our entry point. We can also do mass record deletion. So if I check that and hit the save button and look up the generic inquiry. Now I can't delete records that have been released. Again, those things need to be reversed. So it's just part of the workflow in Acumatica or any financial system. You can't just delete a document. Um, you can so in QuickBooks maybe, but not in a system that's GAP compliant. So now if we go here and we check off a couple, you'll notice that we have the trash can. This trash can appeared as soon as we enabled the mass delete option. So we can click the delete button here and now we've deleted these two records will get a confirmation and now these are gone so now thinking outside this bills and adjustments screen you can use this to delete a bunch of records in Acumatica again if the operation is supported so now you can see those bills are gone we'll go back to the generic inquiry and we take a look you can see enable mass record update. That's another option. When we turn that on, a new tab comes up, mass update fields. So if we go here, this allows us to add any fields that we want to update across the board. So let's say for example, we have a bunch of bills and we want to maybe modify the description. We'll add that field there. Maybe we want to also add uh, a note, for example. 
or change the terms. So we can do that. So we'll add a few fields. We'll add as many as we need to. But in this case, we'll add a couple of fields. We'll hit View Inquiry. And you could see over here our description column. I'll move this over here. And we'll check off a few. And we'll go to Actions and we'll select Update. Now notice Approve and Approve All are here. And Update All and Update are here. So this gives you the ability to do everything as opposed to selecting one at a time. You're better off selecting a couple, testing it, using the Update or the Approve button, and doing a few records at a time before you start trusting the All button. But in this case, we'll say Update. And Acumatica comes up with the fields that we enabled in the generic inquiry. So for example, this was employee health benefits, but let's just call it health benefits. And the terms will change the terms. Notice you'll get a lookup of your different terms that you have set up for vendors. And maybe we want to change this to seven days. We'll click finish. And now if we open up any one of these, You'll notice the description's changed and so is the terms. So being able to do this also helps a lot. You can update a ton of records. In the past with Acumatica, before this functionality was available, you'd run an import scenario and update existing records that way. But import scenarios can take a little time to set up. So this is a lot easier. Let's go back to our generic inquiry. And we'll go to entry point. And you'll notice a few other things here. This generic inquiry is out of the box. It's AP bills and adjustments. So some of these settings you'd expect to be in place, such as the ability to enable a new record. So in other words, when I'm looking at the generic inquiry, I have this plus button here. It allows me to create a new bill. Makes sense. But this is how you can adjust this. The other thing is, is you can create multiple generic inquiries. So you can have different ones for bills and adjustment. But when you create the new record, you can define which fields and what their values are. So you can have, for example, a generic inquiry that says utility bills instead of accounts payable bills. And maybe because of that, you might decide that some of these fields should be set as a default every time you create a, a new record and you hit the plus button. So you could select what you want here. So for example, maybe I want this to be on hold. You could check it. Ordinarily, the preferences in Acumatica are not to create bills on hold, but maybe for this particular generic inquiry, imagine that this is a replica of AP bills and adjustments, but for a specific purpose, and we have all these new defaults that allow us to create bills. So that's an option too. Now, I'll uncheck this, and if I go to navigation, here's another option. Now, when we talk about different types of navigations, in the past you've seen our videos where we show different options such as side panels. So there's a number of different reasons for maybe having different screens here. Maybe I want to go to the vendor profile. So we'll look up vendors. And we would open up the profile screen here. And we have options here. Now again, we've talked about side panels. For this, we can use same tab or new tab or a pop-up window. So let's say, for example, we want to do same tab. We can give it the parameters that we're going to use to navigate to the vendor profile. So that's going to be the account CD. Under parameter, we'll choose the CD field. So vendor account CD. And we'll save it. So we've added this navigation, but now what we need to do is assign it to a field. If we take a look at the View Inquiry screen, before we make any other changes, you'll notice we have a Reference Number field. That's a hyperlink. We can click on this, double-click anywhere against this row, and it'll open up the bill. But in this case, in the example that we're starting on, maybe we want to open up the Vendor Profile here. Now again, you've seen the side panels where we can see a side panel of the Vendor Profile. That's convenient. But if we go back to the Generic Inquiry, and we look at the results grid, maybe under the vendor account CD, we want to navigate so that when we click on that account, we can navigate directly to the vendor's profile. 
based on these settings here. So in this case, we are opening it up in the same tab. We could choose new tab or a pop-up window. So let's get started here. We'll go to the results grid and you notice this navigate to. So the reference number is already set up for this AP bills and adjustment. We go over there, AP bills and adjustment. Back to results grid for the vendor account CD. We'll take a look at the drop down here. Notice there's the two options, the two options that are set up. We'll select vendors for this. We'll save it. Click on view inquiry. And now you see another hyperlink. And if we click on it, this will open up the vendor profile. And again, we said in the same tab. Now if we click the back button, Acumatica is still going to go back to the vendor profiles. It's not going to roll us back to the vendor bills. This is something that maybe Acumatica will improve in the future. But right now, that back button will do that. Had we used the back button on our browser, we might have had better success. But let's go back to our bills and adjustments generic inquiry. And again, you can see the hyperlinks against these vendors. We'll go back to our generic inquiry. And under vendors, we can also, again, choose a new tab, which means it'll open up another tab in our browser, or we can just do a pop-up window, or as we said before, a side panel. Side panels will ignore the results grid because they are side panels. So if we go back to the navigation, we keep the side panel, we'll choose a icon here. And we'll open it up. And we have our icon here and if we select it you'll notice the vendor profile screen comes up because that's what we selected under navigation and it changes based on the record you're on so that's side panels there's a more in-depth video on side panels in our library so the other thing we want to show is parameters so if I go to edit generic inquiry and we look at parameters what we can do at the top of the screen is add a number of parameters and then link them to conditions so that when we select the parameters, Acumatica will automatically filter by that parameter. So let's say, for example, we want to see bills, but we want to see only the bills for a specific vendor. Maybe we want a filter at the top of the screen that we can just select without using the column filters. So we'll put in a name here, vendor. We'll look up the schema field. So it's vendor account CD. So this is the name of the field. We'll use that later for the condition. But then the full name will be vendor name. And we want to pull this from the schema so we can get a lookup. So we'll hit the save button here. And now we don't have it set up to a condition yet. But let's just take a look and see what it looks like. So now you have the vendor name, and if I click the magnifying glass, you can see it's doing a full lookup of all your vendors. Let's go into Edit Generic Inquiry and let's apply this condition. So if we go to Conditions, we can add a brand new condition. Keep an eye on your operators here. So OR conditions like to be grouped together under brackets. ANDs don't really matter, they can be on their own line item. So this is an OR condition and then AND, a series of additional OR conditions. So this, is in effect, is showing different doc types, ACR, ADR. This is behind the scenes, Acumatica's doc types. We're going to add a new one here at the bottom. And it's going to be account CD is equal to our parameter. That's the name we gave it, vendor. Now. If we just leave it like this, we'll save it and we'll open it up. The way it's written, the way it's done right now, is you'll get zero records unless you select a vendor. And that might be the results that you want. Notice it shows only the bills from that particular vendor. And again, that might be the way you want it. You may only want to see one vendor at a time. But if you want to leave it blank and see everything until you select a vendor, then what we do is we go in and we'll take a look at the generic inquiry. We'll add an additional condition, whereas if that value is null as well. 
So if we go back to our conditions, we'll put a parenthesis here because we need an OR. And we'll select OR here. We'll add a new line. And this is OR if the vendor itself is null. And we'll close the parentheses here, save it, and view the inquiry. So now what you get is all of the records until such time where we select a specific vendor and now you'll just see that. So this can be very helpful and you know if you take a look at some of the other generic inquiries in Acumatica such as sales price analysis you'll see some very complex series of parameters and conditions and you can use those to model what you're trying to build. Now one other thing here notice in this case, we're using from the schema, meaning that when we look at our vendor parameter, we hit the magnifying glass, it shows a list. It came from the database, from the schemas, from the database. If we go back to the generic inquiry. You'll notice you also have combo box values. Now, it's going to say, well, wait a sec, you can't do that with the schema field. But if I unselect this and I select combo box here at the top then I can select my values and give it a list of specific vendors maybe I want to use and that's an option there so you can static this list and make it just the selection that you want for this generic inquiry so that's an option as well you can also do things like check boxes so if the field is a boolean or a true false field and you're bringing that from the schema, then you're going to get that anyway. But in this case, we can select checkbox, and that could be your true or false. So there's a number of different options when you're building parameters and conditions that you can do in the generic inquiry. And again, the reason for all of this is, and we'll not save our settings here, is to make this into a workable navigation screen with parameters, an area that your end users can really jump in, do analysis. We of course know that you can do pivot tables on this, but really make it their own and use it for workflows throughout the day. And it gives you the ability to modify these generic inquiries in many different ways without any code or customization. So these are all configurable and they don't require any customization. You may need a little assistance in the beginning to figure out what's coming from what table, but once you master that, this can be an incredible, powerful tool. Lastly, notice we have the ability to expose this via OData. So Excel can support OData. You can also use Microsoft Power BI. You Google search OData. You may see a lot of technologies will connect right up to it. So as soon as we click on expose to OData, you have the ability to connect to this data set remotely using your login credentials and the URL for this generic inquiry. On top of that, all of your generic inquiries are available through SOAP and REST API. So if you create a new one, the second you save it and it's usable, you can go to Tools and click on web service to get the WSDL and you can programmatically pull down this data and filter it. It'll even support the parameter that you use. So programmatically these generic inquiries can be very helpful as well. So that's it. That's generic inquiries, advanced capabilities. If you have any additional questions or you need us to build a generic inquiry for you, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much and have a great day.